Physicists have long been concerned with the numbers that describe our universe, but one number has perplexed them more than any other. That number is 0.0072973, approximately 1 over 137. This is the fine structure constant, a number that appears in almost every equation in quantum physics, yet its meaning still continues to elude the greatest minds in physics. Wolfgang Pauli, one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics, famously said, when I die, my first question to the devil will be, what is the meaning of the fine structure constant? So, what is it about this one number that has captured the attention of the greatest minds in physics? Let's find out. The fine structure constant, represented by the Greek letter alpha, is often seen as just another one of the many constants of nature that govern our physical laws. Similar to the speed of light, the gravitational constant, the Planck's constant, and the mass of an electron. However, there's something uniquely compelling about this number. It's been called the most fundamental unsolved problem in physics by Paul Dirac and was a lifelong puzzle for Richard Feynman, who noted in 1985 that all good theoretical physicists put this number up on their wall and worry about it. But why does Alpha deserve such attention? The mystery of the fine structure constant began in the early days of quantum mechanics, when physicists observed the light emitted as electrons transitioned between energy levels in atoms. This light, broken down into a spectrum of wavelengths, appeared as sharp peaks known as spectral lines. The Bohr model and later the Schrodinger equation were early successes in explaining these lines. However, as measurement tools improved, it became clear that these spectral lines were not as simple as initially thought. They were slightly off from calculated values, and each line was composed of two closely spaced lines. Arnold Sommerfeld provided the explanation for these fine spectral lines by incorporating Einstein's theory of special relativity with the quantum properties of electrons. He found that the energy difference between these fine lines was always a multiple of a specific combination of constants. The square of the electron charge divided by 4 times pi, vacuum permittivity, Planck's constant and the speed of light. When we work out the units of this particular equation, the units all cancel out. This combination, devoid of any units, was purely numerical, leading to the fine structure constant approximately 1 over 137. The fact that alpha is dimensionless, meaning it has no units, makes it a universal number, the same for any observer anywhere in the universe. Alpha's influence extends far beyond spectral lines. It appears throughout physics in unexpected places. For example, in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, the orbital speed of an electron in its ground state is about 137 times slower than the speed of light. The energy of that same electron is smaller than its rest mass energy by a factor of 137 squared. These ratios are not coincidental, but deeply tied to the structure of our universe. There's no obvious reason why these various properties should all relate to 1 over 137 or an integer power of the number 137, yet they do, suggesting that alpha is revealing something fundamental about the universe. Despite its importance, alpha might not be as constant as its name suggests. It might vary with changes with the energy of the interaction it describes. For example, at the incredibly high energies that existed shortly after the Big Bang, the electromagnetic force was unified with the other fundamental forces, such as the strong and weak nuclear force. And the theory suggests that in that incredibly hot universe soup, the value of alpha was close to 1. As the universe cooled and these forces separated from one another, the value of alpha decreased to its current value of approximately 1 over 137. But why did it settle at this particular value? We don't know that yet, but it's a good thing it did. If alpha were even slightly different, the universe could be a very different place. Perhaps one where atoms, stars, and even life as we know it could not exist. Based on the concepts from string theory, some physicists believe that the value of alpha might be connected to the geometry of higher dimensional spaces. Others propose that the value of alpha could have been shaped by the conditions and processes that occurred during the early moments after the Big Bang. The weak anthropic principle suggests that the fundamental constants of the universe, including alpha, might have been set randomly shortly after the Big Bang, and we simply exist in a universe where the value of alpha is favorable to life. Finally, there are some intense debates and skepticism against the claim that alpha could vary in different parts of the universe. Till date, there is no conclusive empirical evidence to suggest that the value of alpha varies in different parts of the universe. But perhaps alpha is not just a physical constant, but a mathematical one like pi. 
a number that expresses a fundamental relationship in mathematics. Without any units, it's challenging to discern what kind of relationship alpha represents. If the other constants of nature define relationships between physical quantities, perhaps alpha represents a relationship between those fundamental relationships, tying together the fundamental constants of the universe in a way we don't yet fully understand. This idea remains speculative, but the unique and ubiquitous nature of the fine structure constant certainly warrants such speculation. The legendary physicist Richard Feynman described it as one of the greatest damn mysteries of physics, poetically musing that the hand of God wrote that number and we don't know how he pushed the pencil. If you thought the fine structure constant was mysterious, you can't miss my next video where I break down some of the most twisted, misquoted and misunderstood scientific ideas in all of cosmology and quantum physics, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment and tell me what topics you want me to cover in the future. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay curious.